transport layer security and its predecessor, Secure Sockets Layer, both of which are frequently referred to as SSL, a cryptographic protocol designed to provide communications security over a computer network. Several versions of the protocols are in widespread use in applications such as web browsing, email, internet faxing, instant messaging, and voice over IP. Major websites use TLS to secure all communications between their servers and web browsers. The primary goal of the TLS protocol is to provide privacy and data integrity between two communicating computer applications. When secured by TLS, connections between a client and a server will have one or more of the following properties. The connection is private because symmetric cryptography is used to encrypt the data transmitted. The keys for this symmetric encryption are generated uniquely for each connection and are based on a secret negotiated at the start of the session. The server and client negotiate the details of which encryption algorithm and cryptographic keys to use before the first byte of data is transmitted. The negotiation of a shared secret is both secure and reliable. The identity of the communicating parties can be authenticated using public key cryptography. This authentication can be made optional, but is generally required for at least one of the parties. The connection is reliable because each message transmitted includes a message integrity check using a message authentication code to prevent undetected loss or alteration of the data during transmission. In addition to the properties above, careful configuration of TLS can provide additional privacy-related properties such as forward secrecy ensuring that any future disclosure of encryption keys cannot be used to decrypt any TLS communications recorded in the past. TLS supports many different methods for exchanging keys, encrypting data, and authenticating message integrity. As a result, secure configuration of TLS involves many configurable parameters and not all choices provide all of the privacy-related properties described in the list above. Attempts have been made to subvert aspects of the communication security that TLS seeks to provide and the protocol has been revised several times to address these security threats. Web browsers have also been revised by their developers to defend against potential security weaknesses after these were discovered. The TLS protocol is composed of two layers, the TLS record protocol and the TLS handshake protocol. TLS is a proposed Internet Engineering Task Force standard first defined in 1999 and updated in RFC 5246 and RFC 6176. It is based on the earlier SSL specifications developed by Netscape Communications for adding the HTTPS protocol to their Navigator web browser. Description the TLS protocol allows client-server applications to communicate across a network in a way designed to prevent eavesdropping and tampering. Since protocols can operate either with or without TLS, it is necessary for the client to indicate to the server the setup of a TLS connection. There are two main ways of achieving this. One option is to use a different port number for TLS connections. The other is for the client to use a protocol-specific mechanism to request that the server switch the connection to TLS. Once the client and server have agreed to use TLS, they negotiate a stateful connection by using a handshake and procedure. During this handshake, the client and server agree on various parameters used to establish the connection's security. The handshake begins when a client connects to a TLS-enabled server requesting a secure connection and presents a list of supported cipher suites. From this list, the server picks a cipher and hash function that it also supports and notifies the client of the decision. The server usually then sends back its identification in the form of a digital certificate. The certificate usually contains the server name, the trusted certificate authority and the server's public encryption key. The client may contact the server that issued the certificate and confirm the validity of the certificate before proceeding. 
In order to generate the session keys used for the secure connection, the client either encrypts a random number with the server's public key and sends the results to the server. Both parties then use the random number to generate a unique session key for subsequent encryption and decryption of data during the session uses Diffie-Hellman key exchange to securely generate a random and unique session key for encryption and decryption that has the additional property of forward secrecy. If the server's private key is disclosed in future, it cannot be used to decrypt the current session, even if the session is intercepted and recorded by a third party. This concludes the handshake and begins the secured connection, which is encrypted and decrypted with the session key until the connection closes. If any one of the above steps fail, the TLS handshake fails, and the connection is not created. TLS and SSL are defined as operating over some reliable transport layer, which places them as application layer protocols in the TCP IP reference model and as presentation layer protocols in the OSI model. The protocols employ a handshake using an asymmetric cipher in order to establish cipher settings and a shared key for a session. The rest of the communication is encrypted using a symmetric cipher and the session key. History and Development Secure network programming Early research efforts towards transport layer security included the Secure Network Programming Application Programming Interface, which in 1993 explored the approach of having a secure transport layer API closely resembling Barclay sockets to facilitate retrofitting pre-existing network applications with security measures. SSL 1.0, 2.0 and 3.0 Netscape developed the original SSL protocols. Version 1.0 was never publicly released because of serious security flaws in the protocol. Version 2.0, released in February 1995 contained a number of security flaws which ultimately led to the design of SSL version 3.0. SSL version 3.0, released in 1996, represented a complete redesign of the protocol, produced by Paul Kocher working with Netscape engineers Phil Carlton and Alan Fryer with a reference implementation by Christopher Allen and Tim Dix of Consensus Development. Newer versions of SSL TLS are based on SSL 3.0. The 1996 draft of SSL 3.0 was published by IETF as a historical document in RFC 6101. Dr. Tahir El Gamal, chief scientist at Netscape Communications from 1995 to 1998, is recognized as the father of SSL. As of 2014, update, the 3.0 version of SSL is considered insecure as it is vulnerable to the Poodle attack that affects all block ciphers in SSL and RC4. The only non-block cipher supported by SSL 3.0 is also feasibly broken as used in SSL 3.0. SSL 2.0 was deprecated in 2011 by RFC 6176. SSL 3.0 was deprecated in June 2015 by RFC 7568. TLS 1.0 TLS 1.0 was first defined in RFC 2246 in January 1999 as an upgrade of SSL version 3.0, and written by Christopher Allen and Tim Dix of Consensus Development. As stated in the RFC, the differences between this protocol and SSL 3.0 are not dramatic but they are significant enough to preclude interoperability between TLS 1.0 and SSL 3.0. TLS 1.0 does include a means by which a TLS implementation can downgrade the connection to SSL 3.0, thus weakening security. TLS 1.1 TLS 1.1 was defined in RFC 4346 in April 2006. It is an update from TLS version 1.0. Significant differences in this version include added protection against cipher block chaining attacks, 
the implicit initialization vector was replaced with an explicit IV. Change in handling of padding errors. Support for IANA registration of parameters. TLS 1.2 TLS 1.2 was defined in RFC 5246 in August 2008. It is based on the earlier TLS 1.1 specification. Major differences include the MD5SHA1 combination in the pseudorandom function was replaced with SHA256, with an option to use cipher suite specified PRFs. The MD5SHA1 combination in the finished message hash was replaced with SHA256, with an option to use cipher suite specific hash algorithms. However, the size of the hash in the finished message must still be at least 96 bits. The MD5SHA1 combination in the digitally signed element was replaced with a single hash negotiated during handshake, which defaults to SHA1. Enhancement in the clients and servers ability to specify which hash and signature algorithms they will accept. Expansion of support for authenticated encryption ciphers. Used mainly for Galois, counter mode and CCM mode of advanced encryption standard encryption, TLS extensions definition and advanced encryption standard cipher suites were added. All TLS versions were further refined in RFC 6176 in March 2011 removing their backward compatibility with SSL such that TLS sessions will never negotiate the use of secure sockets layer version 2.0. TLS 1.3 is of October 2015. Update. TLS 1.3 is a working draft and details are provisional and incomplete. It is based on the earlier TLS 1.2 specification. Major differences from TLS 1.2 include removing support for weak and lesser used named elliptic curves, removing support for MD5 and SHA-224 cryptographic hash functions, requiring digital signatures even when a previous configuration is used, integrating HKDF and the semi-ephemeral DH proposal, replacing resumption with PSK in tickets, supporting 1RTT handshakes and initial support for ORTT, dropping support for many insecure or obsolete features including compression, renegotiation, non-AEAD ciphers, Static RSA and static DH key exchange, custom DHE groups, point format negotiation, change cipher spec protocol, hello message Unix time, and the length field AD input to AEAD ciphers, prohibiting SSL or RC4 negotiation for backwards compatibility, integrating use of session and hash deprecating use of the record layer version number and freezing the number for improved backwards compatibility, moving some security-related algorithm details from an appendix to the specification and relegating client key share to an appendix. Digital certificates. A digital certificate certifies the ownership of a public key by the named subject of the certificate. This allows others to rely upon signatures or on assertions made by the private key that corresponds to the certified public key. Certificate authorities in this model of trust relationships. A CA is a trusted third party, trusted both by the subject of the certificate and by the party relying upon the certificate. According to Nepcraft, who monitor active TLS certificates, the market-leading CA has been Symantec since the beginning of their survey. Symantec currently accounts for just under a third of all certificates and 44% of the valid certificates used by the 1 million busiest websites as counted by Nepcraft, as a consequence of choosing X509 certificates. Certificate authorities and a public key infrastructure are necessary to verify the relation between a certificate and its owner, as well as to generate, sign, and administer the validity of certificates. While this can be more beneficial than verifying the identities via a web of trust, the 2013 mass surveillance disclosures made it more widely known that certificate authorities are a weak point from a security standpoint, allowing man-in-the-middle attacks.
algorithm, key exchange or key agreement before a client and server can begin to exchange information protected by TLS. They must securely exchange or agree upon an encryption key and a cipher to use when encrypting data. Among the methods used for key exchange agreement are public and private keys generated with RSA, Diffie-Hellman, ephemeral Diffie-Hellman, elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman, ephemeral elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman, anonymous Diffie-Hellman, pre-shared key and secure remote password. The TLS underscore DH underscore Anon and TLS underscore ECDH underscore Anon key agreement methods do not authenticate the server or the user and hence are rarely used because those are vulnerable to man in the middle attack. Only TLS underscore DHE and TLS underscore ECDHE provide forward secrecy. Public key certificates used during exchange agreement also vary in the size of the public-private encryption keys used during the exchange and hence the robustness of the security provided. In July 2013, Google announced that it would no longer use 10 24-bit public keys and would switch instead to 20 48-bit keys to increase the security of the TLS encryption it provides to its users. Cypher notes carrot ABCDRFC 5746 must be implemented in order to fix a renegotiation flaw that would otherwise break this protocol. Carrot if libraries implement fixes listed in RFC 5746, this will violate the SSL 3.0 specification, which the IETF cannot change unlike TLS. Fortunately, most current libraries implement the fix and disregard the violation that this causes. Carrot AB the beast attack breaks all block ciphers used in SSL 3.0 and TLS 1.0 unless mitigated by the client and or the server. See hashtag web browsers. Carrot the poodle attack breaks all block ciphers used in SSL 3.0 unless mitigated by the client and or the server. See hashtag web browsers. Carrot ABCDEAEAD ciphers can be used in only TLS 1.2. Carrot ABCDEFGHCBC ciphers can be attacked with the lucky 13 attack if the library is not written carefully to eliminate timing side channels. Carrot although the key length of 3DES is 168 bits, effective security strength of 3DES is only 112 bits, which is below the recommended minimum of 128 bits. Carrot AB idea and DES have been removed from TLS 1.2. Carrot ABC 40 bits strength of cipher suites were designed to operate at reduced key lengths in order to comply with U.S. regulations about the export of cryptographic software containing certain strong encryption algorithms. These weak suites are forbidden in TLS 1.1 and later. Carrot use of RC4 in all versions of TLS is prohibited by RFC 7465. Carrot authentication only, no encryption. Data integrity message authentication code is used for data integrity. HMAC is used for CBC mode of block ciphers and stream ciphers. AEAD is used for authenticated encryption such as GCM mode and CCM mode.